Um, we're at the Wexford Court with you, Roy. It's um, August 20th, and you, Roy, is about to tell us how he came to be known as the father of the DJs, Daddy You, Roy. Well, yes, uh, maybe it's because I'm in the business so, so long, so old in the business, that's why the people choose me to be the father of the DJ business, you know? But you, Roy, there's more to it than that. They call you the originator. And what I'd like to know is, did you actually originate the style of DJing as we know it today? Well, I originated my style. And that's how this thing really come about. I originated my own style. I don't try to imitate people because, I mean, imitating someone, that doesn't put you too far in the business, you know? It's good when you have your own style. People know your trademark, so they, they know you by, by styles. Okay, what would you say is your trademark? Well, I would say that my style. <laughs> a, a word to describe it. Like for me, when I listen to you, Roy, and I hear it in Big Youth, and I hear it in some of the new people too, I hear you fling your lyrics. Yeah. It's a more lyrical, aggressive attack, you know? I mean. Well, there are some styles that I have that the people seem to, to, to love very much. Like when I says, yeah, you know, and <laughs> people seem to love, love that. That is one of my style that people love. Mm -hmm. And what would you say among your songs are the signature you, Roy, material? Um, Yes, like Way to the Ball, Naughty Rebel, Dreading Babylon, yeah man. You select those. I know there are many, many more as we saw last night. So you actually started in the early 70s. Yeah, right in the early 70s I started, yeah. Okay, where were you in Kingston? If so, what part and uh, who were you working with at that time? Yes, I started in Kingston. I was uh, working with King Toby Zyfi at the time, and I really get things started. I, I, we used to play a lot of uh, Treasure Island music, Duke Reed, and I, uh, Duke Reed heard a tape with a dance that I just finished the weekend. So he said he would love to know me, and then I check him. That's the way things started going with me, you know. So I appreciate it a lot. Which was your first hit? My first hit was uh, Read the Town and Tell the People. And Read the Town. <laughs> Read the Town and Tell the People, and this station ruled the nation. That was the two first big hits that I ever had in this business. Um, it seems that for a period of time in the 80s, we didn't see new material from you. Uh, well, <clears throat> I'm sorry. One of, the, one of the reasons for this, I was uh, working with Virgin. I, I had a contract with them, but my contract is finished with them. So I just decided to cool out for a while because I don't like to be pushed around and things like that, you know. And... Moreover, one of the reasons why I also don't do no recording is that I know that I don't have any contract with anybody, so I don't have to rush that uh, right by September you have to find this LP, get this LP to Virgin. So I just relax for a while, and I think that is very good in the business sometimes, you know? To cool out. But then, after that period, suddenly we see stuff like Line Up and Come, and then we see the new one on Ross, Musical Addict. So could you tell us how um, you came to be affiliated with Ross Records? You see, Jasbo and myself are in some business. Now, uh, after we do this album, he claimed that we would love to give it to a reputable company to, to distribute a thing like that. So. It seems as if Russ was the one who, who checked on Jasmine and they, they set up the business going, you know. So that's the reason how come, you see. 
I really have this record on Rust label. <laughs> That's good. Are you planning to do any more work with Ross, or so far this is a wait and see kind of deal? Well, as long as the business runs smooth, we can be in any kind of business with Ross. But if it's not smooth, I don't really want to fool about, you know? You've been in the business too long for more of that. Right. For our listeners that are coming in late, we're talking with Daddy Uroy at the Wexford Court Hotel, and we're ready to ask him what his future plans are. Uh, my future plans, I want to get a band, a nice band, with my own PA system up front, and uh, start producing some other youths, because I have a lot of youth around me right now that they're very good singers, you know, and they need pushing to go ahead, so I want to, that is my future plan right now, to get those things on the road, you know? Um, are these youths that you mentioned working with any sound right now? No, not really, uh, just one of them, but you have other versatile youths, you have, you have, there's many versatile youths right now on the street that people never heard anything about because they, they didn't have a chance to be heard, you understand? So, if you try with someone, I mean, when you heard about Michael Jackson, all right, I wouldn't even put it so far. When you heard about you, I, I didn't just get me known to the people just like that, you know? We're growing the business, you know? So, that's why I said we'd love to start with some young youth, because you have a few conscious youth that you can do any kind of business with them, all right? Take them while they're young and bring them up and, and show them so they can learn from uh, previous experience. Right. Yeah, more, more cultural style. Cause that, is what we, that is what I personally love to cater for, the, the cultural part of the music. That's what I love. And I respect you that penetrate the cultural part of the music because I think that's, that's really the right part, you know? Soon you'll become known as the teacher, Daddy Uroy. So, Uroy, do you plan to come to Texas at any time soon? Yes, I would. I would love to. I would love to come to Texas to do a few concerts. I hope it will be soon. I don't know when. It... Okay, I was wondering if you have a few special words for our listeners at K True. Oh yes. Just to let the love of Jack keep on shining in your life and in your heart each and every time and love reggae music, you know? Yeah. I always learned this from when I was a small kid. Uh, Self-praise is, is no recommendations. So, for me to come around and say, oh, I'm you, Roy, and I'm the best, I'm the teacher, no. I wouldn't want to, to, to be like that. I just want to know that Whatever I do, people appreciate it. And that's it, because the people is the one who makes you big. They are the ones who can get you very small, you know? So no need to brag and boast in this business. You don't, you don't call for all of that, you know? So that's the reason why, more time, I don't worry. If I'm not spoken to, I don't love to, to speak, you understand? Yeah. It's just like that. Just cool out. And if someone notice you and come up to you, then fine. Otherwise, right? If somebody have something sensible to say, yeah, no problem. We can talk. If <laughs> if it, if you don't have nothing sensible, don't worry to let us talk about it. Cause it don't make sense. All right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot. All right. Uh, now, wait the town and tell the people that this is you, Roy, and you've been listening to K True Radio, man. Enough reggae music, man, to rock your soul, man. Now, wait the town and tell the people that this is Daddy You Roy, man, and you've been listening to K True Radio, man. More reggae music and your dial, brother and sisters, so get up while you got some pep, y'all.
What is the name of the station? K2. 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 Oh, K2. Yeah. All right. Now, wait the town and tell the people. You've been tuning to K2 Radio. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> 